What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be re-reviewing the high-grade Cubalet Papillon from Gundam Build Fighters. The undefeatable gunpla customized for the Finnish fighter Ayla Yurkiainen, it relies on its clear funnels to take out its opponents, and ups its performance using the Embody system if all else fails. Since the revived version of the Cubalet did not exist back then, the high-grade Cubalet Papillon is based on the old high-grade Universal Century Cubalet from 1999, with three runners and polycaps reused from the old mold. That being said, four originally molded runners, an action base, and a daunting sticker sheet is also included. As a result, the build feels massively dated, there's no sugarcoating that, especially when the new parts are built around old engineering, so expect something that doesn't feel as good to put together as any of the contemporaries. That being said, the build is generally very simple, with the most challenging parts being fitting the treads and pipes onto the chest and tackling with the 10 funnels, though most of the build time will be dedicated to applying all the orange stickers for the trim design. Though it may be old, it still feels alright to put together. Full disclaimer, blues and pinks don't translate too well from real life to camera footage, especially not when they're on the same subject. I tried fiddling around with the camera settings to reflect its real life looks as closely as possible and illustrate my major gripe with this kit, the color accuracy. While the overall bolder colors are reflective of some of its space-born scenes, the pink should have leaned towards a softer tone, the blue needs a stronger green tinge, and the purple should be more of a prune. This is also a good opportunity to observe its looks without the orange trim stickers, and as you can see, most of the trim detail is molded on lifted surfaces, so you can easily paint those in. Apart from those, some pink accents on the wrist cuffs as well as the indents on the calves and tail binder are also needed. It will be quite a bit of work to fill in the missing details, and even more so if line art accuracy is the aim. Touch ups applied and without the colors bothering me, the focus can be turned to the other aspects. The kit generally has the proportions down except for the overly large forearms, reflecting the butterfly motif that gave it its name really well, and I especially like how it went with the traditional Gundam eyes instead of the angry feline mono eyes, reflecting well with the stickers that also provide the slatted detail. On the subject of stickers, apart from the eyes and green head sensors, all the orange you see on the body are stickers, and they do work well for the most part, though application will be a little bit tricky for the longer pieces as well as those that need to fold over surfaces, but the ones on the v just don't look good at all. I would highly recommend painting that in yourself. The large smooth panels also offer minimal panel lining opportunities. Mostly, the biggest obstacle to overcome is the orange trim and missing pink accents, if not for the colors themselves. Otherwise, the visual foundations are sound. Articulation begins with a ball jointed head with a very high neck raise, but barely any rotation. The binders are adjustable with a pivot and rotation at the base and binders, making room for the arms to pivot forward and back, rotate, and move out perpendicularly. There's a rotation and bend at the elbow, while the wrists are ball jointed. The chest panel can move, and there is a great front to back tilt, as well as a full waist rotation. The hip plates and tail binder can move, while the legs can go past the full front splits, and the sideward kicks are a bit restricted. There's a thigh swivel, single jointed knees, and ball jointed ankles, with a separate toe joint. The adjustability of the Cubalet Papillon's body panels is quite decent for the most part, though the articulation is largely as limited as the old one. The structure is also quite secure too, though be mindful of the polycaps dislodging themselves after movement. Accessory-wise, the Papillon has the old sets of holding and open hands as well as a new polystyrene set of holding hands tailor-made for using its main handheld accessory, the Lancer bit, which has a red sticker for one of its tips and can be rather solidly held in the hand as a melee weapon from disassembly or as a ranged weapon with the protruding side handle. Alternatively, there is a pair of clear toothpicks that can be used as the kit's beam sabers, held in the old, softer hands, rather dodgily, in place of the stored dummies on the arms. At least painting in the handle shouldn't be that hard of a task. As for its signature weapons, well, we don't get the clear funnels in this kit, but instead, 10 standard colored ones pegged into the rear skirt are included. Aside from inducing trypophobia, the funnels can be detached from storage, but there is no way to display them separately as standard. Finally, the included action base can be plugged directly into the cross to prop it up for aerial displays. For leftovers, there are some old forearm, heel, and inner binder pieces left over, and while you may be able to use them for scraps, there's not enough here to revert the kit back to the original Cubalet. 
Let's cut to the chase. The high grade Cubelay Papillon isn't going to be a good kit if you're looking for anything close to the high grade Revive or contemporary kits, as its age shows through with every aspect, be it the build, the engineering, and the articulation, arming it with a primary melee weapon exemplifying that further. Moreover, since the new parts are made based on the antiquated concepts of the original high grade Cubelay, there's a lot of extra details that need filling in, if not a full repaint to get it looking 100% line art accurate. However, this kit does have one selling point that dictates the purchase, and that is the character. The original Cubelay is made for two things, the pressurizing aura and the use of its funnels. Meanwhile, while the Papillon could not make good use of its handhelds, the sheer silhouette and red trims are enough to dominate the shelf. Should that be all you're looking for, I think you would enjoy the high grade Cubelay Papillon regardless of its flaws, especially with some TLC. However, if its spaces and shortcomings are enough of a deal breaker, then move along. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe for more content like this and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye bye.